Hello everyone and welcome back to The Forge. Now in this week's episode we're going to be taking this rail spring clip here and we're going to be making it into a wakazashi. Now I'm aiming for about a 28, 28 and a quarter inch overall length for this wakazashi with around a 22 inch blade, about a 6 and a quarter inch handle. That should put it right in the ballpark of what they originally would have been. Uh, this should be a good hardenable steel. Uh, let's get it thrown in the forge, get it straightened out. Let's get to work.
not too bad for an old rusty railroad clip, railroad spring clip. Pretty happy with the way this turned out so far. Uh, it's a good stopping point for today. Next video, we'll get this sucker cleaned up, profile cleaned up, get it heat treated, and get to looking into what we're going to do for fittings. Hello everyone, welcome back to the forge. Now our last video, we rough forged our Wakazashi out of that rail spring clip. So we're going to jump in and get this cleaned up, get the profile cleaned up, get the bevels roughed in, get everything set up for heat treat so we can move on to the fittings. Alright, let's get after it. For the most part, we're pretty well centered in the middle of this till we get right down here at the tip. At the tip, we kind of kick over. Let's see here for the focus. I don't know if it'll focus or not. Let's get it back in. All right, we start kicking over right about about two to three inches from the tip here. Yeah, you see where it starts wavering to that side. Still plenty enough to grind it straight, but right here we begin to get off. So. I'm going to heat this section right here back up and we're going to hammer it over in alignment a little bit more. The spine's in pretty good shape. It's nice and straight, but this edge here is just kicked over where the bevel is. So let's get it tossed in the forge and get that straightened out. Much better. I think that'll work well. All right, this is where we currently are. Uh, I have thermal cycled this four times. Uh, made sure everything was good and straight. I have some furnace cement that's good to 2,000 degrees. I'm going to go ahead, I don't know if this steel will take a hamon or not, but we're going to give it a try and see, why not? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and start laying that out on here, let it cure up, and then we'll be ready to heat treat it. So let's get after it. All right, I got all that furnace cement on there. Looks like we're all set up and ready for heat treat. So let's get it tossed in the forge and let's get this sucker hardened. Heat treat went great. No cracks or anything that I can see. Blade got nice and hard. So 
I'm gonna take it in there to the grinder. We're gonna clean all this up and get ready to move on to working on the hibaki and probably the suba as well. All right, let's get to work. All right, I got the blade cleaned up for the most part. I went ahead and etched it to see if I had got a hamon after putting all of that refractory or that uh, furnace cement on there, and there's not much one. It goes just like this right here. Uh, didn't really get any activity down here, which is fine. Uh, as you get sometimes a mystery steel, so not a big deal there. I didn't know the blade got hard. That's all that matters. Uh, Got this piece of eighth of an inch copper that I'm making the hibaki out of. So let's get it tossed in the forge and get it annealed and start bending it around. Uh, this is where we currently stand with our hibaki. I did get it bent and shaped around the wakazashi. Uh, still got a lot of cleanup on it. We'll make short work of that with the uh, belt sander. But I did have a separation right here. I soldered this together, and as you can see, clearly there's a separation. So I'm going to have to re-solder it again. Not a big deal. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and get this fixed up and move on to getting the suba done. So. The reason I didn't show this in depth is there's a lot of other makers out there that do this a whole lot better than me. And I mean, Walter Sortles is a, is a perfect example. There's several others. Uh, instead of showing you my attempt, which is the first one that I've ever made, uh, it's better to go to watch someone that really knows what they're doing on this part. Uh, like I said, I'm happy with this, but it's the first one I've ever done. So anyway, let's get it uh, fixed up and get it fluxed and get the soldering done, and then we'll move on to the Suba. All right, there we go. Still got a lot of cleanup work left on it, but it fits good. There's no crack anymore. Yeah, I think that'll work out. All right, time to move on to looking at how we're gonna do the suba. All right, I've got us a piece of scrap mild steel here. Plan on doing a hammer texture on the guard, so I think that it will, uh, it'll do well. Originally I looked at this thinner eighth of an inch, uh, it's just going to be too thin. Once I hammer it, hammer the texture in on it and everything, it's going to be way too thin. This, uh, this here ought to work well. So I'm going to go ahead and scribe the halfway marks, get our holes drilled, get it fit up to the tang, and then we will drill it out, or we'll mill it out, and uh, clean it up, and get this sucker fit up.
We're getting there. A little bit of foul work and we should have a good fit up. All right, now that we got our guard portion here nice and fit up, I went ahead and put the layout fluid on it, and I'm gonna take some reference marks here so I can get this guard nice and even when I grind it to shape. Uh, right now, I'm thinking I'm gonna go with a pretty simple guard uh, just because of the size, uh, but we'll see how that works out when I get going. So let's get this measured out. All right, overall we're pretty symmetrical all the way around. Uh, just a little bit off here and there with our square. So we can pretty much just go ahead in here and draw our, uh, make a we can go ahead in here with a template and draw out the shape of our Suba without much trouble. So I'm gonna go ahead and get one made up and we'll trace it on there and get it ground out. All right, here's our paper template. All I did was just use this to cut a piece of paper in the, in the same shape, square shape as that, uh, folded it in half, folded that in half, that gave me two reference lines, like that, and I just happened to find a washer laying around that kind of fit the, the curve that I wanted to go with, and so when I folded it in half, I just took this and made it up at the two points and drew the circle, the, uh, around the edge there. It will work perfectly fine for what I'm wanting to do here with this. So, let's go ahead and get these lines scribed and then we'll grind it out. And uh, we should be in good shape. And I know this won't be perfect, but it'll get me in the ballpark of where I want to be. And as I clean these parts up leading into the final assembly, I'll be able to, to really refine the shape that I'm after. So let's get this ground to shape. All right, not too bad. We got our hibaki made, we got our guard made, or our suba as it's known. Pretty pleased with the progress. Uh, we're going to stop there though because I'm still waiting for some of our other materials to come in. Uh, and with the state of things in the world today, they were delayed or they would have already been here. And Hello everyone and welcome back to the forge. Now after yesterday's video uh, where we worked on the wakazashi, I had a lot of questions about the habaki because in the in the video I didn't really show exactly how I made it. I got to the point of me bending it over, hammering on it some, and then the next thing you know, boom, finished habaki. Now the reason for that is is a lot of the footage was out of focus. It was really bad, and I didn't think y'all guys would want to see you know several minutes of blurry footage with me pecking and hammering on stuff. So today I decided. Uh, after giving it some thought over the course of the night, then I'll just do a little video dedicated to the making of this hibaki, how I made the hibaki. So, so uh, I have minimal tools on this. I don't have none of the fancy bending jigs, stuff like that. Uh, so I'll just show you how I did it. Uh, there is better ways to do this. I'll get that out front right now. Uh, there are people that do a better job, but this worked for me. And for you just starting out, this may be a good way to approach it without having a whole bunch of fancy equipment. So. Let's get after it. All right, I'm gonna be using this piece of scrap uh, copper round. I think it's like a two inch piece. Uh, it's not quite an eighth of an inch thick, but it'll be plenty thick enough. I'm gonna start out with cutting about an inch and a half to one inch piece, uh, one, one inch to an inch and a half piece off of this. And then we'll slice it and we'll flatten it out. And then we'll start forming our hibaki.
All right, now that that's annealed, we're gonna go ahead and bend it out and get it flattened. Alright, I've taken our piece of copper in there to the surface conditioning belt and I've cleaned it up. So now we're ready to start bending it around the back of our wakazashi. Now what I do is after it's roughly kind of formed, I just kind of use my vise to squeeze it around it just to get a little better fit there on the back where I can. Okay. Now I go back with the hammer. All right, this is where we currently are. It's way too big, which is better to have too much than not enough. Uh, I am going to go in now, let me get this focus back in, and I'm gonna come right back here and we're gonna cut a notch. That is where the shoulder of the wakazashi will slide down into the habaki. I'm just gonna do that with a file. I don't have a handsaw available right now with a good blade, so I'm just gonna file in that notch and uh, then we'll be ready to start working on cutting it to length and soldering the piece in the front of it here. All right, that's kind of what we're looking for right there. So it slides up over the edge. Like I said, this is looking pretty rough right now. We'll clean it up when it's all said and done, make it look a lot better. And uh, now we'll move on to getting it cut to length, getting the piece put in there and soldered in place. All right, now that we're at this point right here, like I said, we have our fit up good on the back. We're gonna put this piece into here. Now, we don't want this piece to be all the way up where the edge of the blade is. We want it to be right down below where the blade is. Making a bigger piece here would be smart because that way you have plenty to grind off and everything else. You just wanna make sure you keep it where it needs to be at. I'm gonna scratch this a mark here where I want that to stay at so I can see where it needs to be. And like I said, it needs to be all the way back up in there to where it rests against the tang right here. And what we'll do is we'll flux this real well and then I don't have a hand torch to solder this with, so I'm gonna do it in front of the forge. Not really hard to do, you just gotta watch it what you're doing and stay on top of it. Alright, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna pinch this right here with the tongs. That just kinda help hold everything in place. I got my solder here ready. So let's go ahead and get it heated up and get it soldered. is for the most part we're going to go to the grinder and clean this up see how it turns out
All right, there it is for the most part. Like I said, it's still pretty rough. A lot of cleanup is going to be required on this one. But this one's mainly just to show you the steps that I didn't get to capture in the video the other day. Uh, not too bad. If you have the equipment to be able to build a jig, if you plan on making a lot of these, it's definitely worthwhile. It would make things a lot easier. And I may build one in the future. But we'll see what happens. Hello everyone, welcome back to the forge. Now today we're going to start work on our Suba and go ahead and get the rest of our parts of our Wakazashi wrapped up so we can get it put together and have it all finished. Now uh, a lot of you that watched the video about the making of the Hibaki may have seen that I have a template made up. And I'm thinking about going with that design for the Suba. So I'm going to lay out the four holes here. I'm going to drill them with a drill press. Uh, I may wait on these two side pieces and, and then mill them out later on just so I can get an idea of, of what they'll look like. But let's go ahead and get these holes laid out, get them drilled, and get moving on. All right, I just got back from the meal, and that's what our guard looks like so far. Uh, we'll see how it fits up on the wakazashi, and then we'll move on to the next step. All right, there we are so far. Pretty happy with it. There's still some file work I need to do on this guard, like clean up. I need to radius the edges real well. So, we're going to move on to some other things now. Let's get after it. All right, now that I got the guard rough formed. I'm going to move on to the SEPA, which is a spacer that goes here below the Hibaki and, a, and another spacer that goes here below the SUBA before the handle. I'm going to be using the same uh, round, uh, two inch round piece of copper that I've got that I made the, uh, the Hibaki out of in the other video uh, for these spacers. So let's go ahead and get a piece cut off, get it cut up, and get to forming these. the same process of heating this up in the forge and annealing it. It's really soft. I'm going to go ahead and hammer this out flat and then I will get my scribing pen and lay out how I want my sepa to look, the shape and the size and everything based on the rest of the wakazashi and then we'll get them cut out and get the holes drilled in them and file the shape. Now what I did on this is the same thing I did with the layout of the suba and everything when I first started out even for the template and the design of the parts I removed. I just cut a piece of paper, made a small template, something I lay on top of the copper, scribe around it with my pen, be good to go. So yeah, so let's get that done.
Now that we've got everything above the guard figured out, we're going to start looking at everything below the guard. For that, the first place I want to start is getting the piece of wood cut out for what will become our handle. Because at that point, I can trim it back when I go to add the spacer up here. I can add the other sepa with no problem because it needs to match the same size of the handle itself. So I'm going to go ahead and cut a piece of black walnut. I've got an abundance of it. Move on to scribing it out and getting it, getting the groove cut into it. All right, now that we've got our handle rough shaped, I can go ahead and glue the sides together and get it ready for final shaping, and then we can move on to the last few components, and it won't be long till we're all wrapped up.